we're now going to move on to the, the overall Q&A. So keep your question, and I'd like to ask the other leaders, the other presenters, to come and join us here on stage, and then we can take further questions uh, for, for the whole of... So we have Brian and Lucie and all, the, all the, the people who were in the other work package presentations this afternoon. Please come and join us on stage. Marta, Lida, and I will just let... Don't sit on the microphones. <laughs> Christine. <coughs> and we are still missing a couple of people, I believe. We are missing one work. Ah, here we go. Francois and Rosa. Here we go. Take your seats. <laughs> Thank you very much. So yes, the idea was to get you all together. And um, yeah, so we will resume. You have already the mic in hand. So yeah, Ralf Zutpak from the Global AMR R&D Hub. I have also one question. Do you thinking about approaching national parliaments uh, with politicians so as, as a group? So I haven't heard this yet. Yes, of course, it's one of the target audiences. We need the policy makers. So during New UGM Rai, one of our products were the policy briefs, so we will try to, to reach them. And any help is welcome. Message out there? Any help is welcome. We have two raised hands over here. Okay, and please introduce yourself. To, to, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, so my name is Hanna Bartakova uh, for the AMR patient group. So first of all, thank you very much for presenting all the uh, great and exciting actions that are in the pipeline. Um, I wanted to ask you if you have any uh, concrete proposals on how to involve uh, the patients, uh, the ones who have suffered from the silent pandemic and who uh, would like to be involved uh, maybe in the, the fight against AMR uh, and who are maybe a little bit uh, more isolated uh, in, their, uh, in their fight. Um, so, especially in maybe awareness, but also all the other uh, working packages. Thank you. Who would like to take this one? <coughs> one of you, be brave. <laughs> you see, no, you well, I'm sure that also there are some measures in IPC and the stewardship that will involve patients. Uh, I think, you know, I'm going to be very honest. We are planning everything. We don't have concrete actions designed yet. But it's, it's one of our target audience, and uh, we will find the best way to, uh, you know, reach them. We have a plan that it's on the paper. Now we have to sit, discuss, and find the best way to implement those ideas and reach that target audience. From the communication point of view, that's what I will say. Yes, if I may add something. Yes, yes please. The, the patient associations are in our stakeholder forum because it's very important to have them on board. And uh, the last speaker also will be able to ally that. Thank you, Marie-Cécile. I think we had two questions here, didn't we? have two people who were... No? Okay, so please don't hesitate. You have... A, you have they, they're going to be leaving after this, so make the most of them being here. <laughs> Maybe you have questions among each other. I was, I'm sure you actually probably do have some <laughs> questions you want to ask each other about your different presentations. Okay. Do I have, sorry, I have the lights yes, in my eyes. Yes, can I have, have, have one? Uh, it, it is to, to work with package four and, and work with package five. Thank you very, very, very much for your, your pre 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 presentation. Uh, but uh, 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 as I said before, it's a wish from work package seven to put IPC on the national or, or the EU uh, 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 agenda. How, how, how do you think that it will go when, when you are making your uh, uh, in a, in a AP networks and so on? Uh, have you have some, some talk talks about that? I will take advantage of the last words from Laura that we are still um, thinking on how to put things in practice. And I think that that's uh, very good that we are all together here because at least now we know each other physically and we have met so that we, the, the, 
the lines will be shorter to, to interact together. I, I have to say that uh, from our side, it's uh, very important that this person, the liaison officer, is also involved in all the work packages to have uh, this global helicopter vision on, on what is happening in all, in all the other work packages. And then through work package five and uh, sustainability, uh, to put into, into the, or implement it into the national action plans. And of course that you, you will have four years work, so it will not happen the first day. But this contact and these interactions in the beginning, I think that is essential if we want to succeed at the end. And if I may add, your work in IPC is a good example of a kind of work which can be sustained or is relevant and has value at all levels, at different levels. At the national level, of course, some countries, for some countries, that might be one of the priority areas where they want to strengthen uh, their national ac uh, action plan, so that can be implemented uh, with the help of the liaison officers, linking with uh, uh, member states, and uh, uh, as a way to uh, in integrate your work into uh, their national action plan. But that can also be relevant uh, as uh, you know, uh, as uh, uh, if uh, in the work of a WHO Euro uh, in a pan-European level. Uh, also relevant, perhaps at the international level, there's a IPC strategy was adopted. Uh, I think last year there's an IPC action plan, uh, which is to be adep, uh, adopted this, this year. So your work can also link into that, perhaps linking with the uh, external action of the uh, EU uh, in the development, uh, development field, uh, field as well. So the toolbox, but the tools you produce can be adapted, used at all those different levels, and, and we'll need to see how exactly that can be done. But it, it's a good example of a dif different ways in which work can be done and sustain at the different levels. Thank you very much for taking so yeah it comes back to the question of, of not working in silos and how to better work together. You see Yeah I think that was my follow up question like how do we ensure that our work packages are actually working together? Uh, I can make sure that the work for example we're doing in the surveillance work package can be used by people doing uh, stewardship or IPC uh, is it the work from work package one or work package five to put things together? Because we have so many partners and so many countries involved, there is no way we can have um, those, those, I don't know, 200 plus partners sitting uh, around the same table. So we need these people that will make the link between the work packages so we're not working in parallel. Already preparing this joint presentation between two work, page, work packages was a challenge, so now if we have to work across 10, and being effective, we need to be quite smart uh, on how we want to organize it. So what do you think are some of the solutions then, you see? Uh, probably this liaison officer that you were mentioning, yeah. I'm hoping at national level can be the one which is sort of juggling between the work packages and uh, making the connection where they are needed. Um, and maybe having some joint meetings across work packages would probably be helpful as well. Just uh, some ideas, but if you have other ideas, please. Just, uh, wow. Yes, and this is also our role as a coordinator to force you to, uh, <laughs> to discuss and the first step, and thank you very much to all of you because it was really amazing. The first step was, as you say, Lucy, to prepare jointly this presentation and not work package per work package because it doesn't w show exactly the connections. And this is the f uh, first step today. And... Uh, for those who were in the first joint action during the preparation of the next meetings and the General Assembly, uh, we have done that. We have uh, uh, put people together and made groups and they say, oh no, but we are not doing the same thing. And no, at the end you will have the same message. So I, I, am, not, I, I, am, not, I am not worried about that. I know you will succeed. Thank you, Marie Cécile. Yes, please. Um, thank you again. So just some reflections of the day in a way. Uh, first of all, thank you, really, thank you very, very much. Uh, we're sitting here in February 2024. Um, Alexander Fleming did pencil in the 20s. In 1945, he did a very, very strong speech when he, he received the Nobel Prize, where he actually said, we're going to kill people if there is resistance. And like two centuries nearly afterwards, uh, we are still talking about it. Um, there's now going to be a, a EU election. 
uh, are what we are doing vulnerable related to the, the, the result of that election. Um, myself, personally, I'm sort of not too confident of what the result of the election will be. Um, and then, since we are here in Paris, there is a legal binding um, meeting uh, of um, climate change. Couldn't we do a, the same in Paris on the antibiotic resistance? to get more visibility globally and in Europe. Thank you. Thank you. Any reactions to this? Christine. Well, there is, there's going to be the UN General Assembly has a meeting on AMR in September. So, so we have, um, we absolutely have the attention, the world's attention. Probably every single person in this room is getting a lot of attention from their Ministry of Health asking for certain things up to September. So suddenly your, your, your calendar has just been filled up with a lot of things focusing on the, the September meeting. So I think we've, we've got their attention, uh, so that's good. So now, you know, now we know each other and uh, we can, you know, start action. I think that's why we're here is to actually start action in each of the, the participating countries. Thank you very much. Would anyone like to add something? Yeah. Very nice. Yes, Peter. <laughs> Do we have, yes, you have a hand raised over here. Hello, uh, my name is Jonathan Gomez. I'm coming from the Regional Ministry of Health uh, at the government of Extremadura in Spain. I belong to the health care system. I belong to the health uh, um, sector, uh, human health sector, but I really concern about the, the other two sectors, you know, animal and uh, environmental. And in this sense, uh, how did you plan to engage, uh, especially, you know, farmers and, you know, uh, the agriculture based uh, sector, especially, you know, with the tractors uh, outside on the streets uh, right now? So it's a very specific profile. And probably we have to plan in advance uh, how to tackle and uh, how to engage those, because you know healthcare professionals probably is much easier, but not this kind of profile. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Yes, very difficult. Angry farmers, actually, uh, with you know with the strikes all around now. At least for in Spain. We are living now that also here in France, so um, it's it's not going to be easy. I think that we we have to find the stories, compelling the stories. Like uh, I always remember the story of the you know the farmer from the Netherlands that you know um, uh, um, his uh, daughter fell sick and he was a big farmer, so he didn't have a choice and he changed his, the way he was, you know, raising his pigs to save his daughter. And then he shared that story and convinced other farmers to do the same. So that will be one way of doing it, try to find, you know, that way to reach them. Lida? Yes, and also we need to remember that it's not just one competent authority that is going to do the work. That's why we have affiliated entities, that's why we have collaborating partners, because it has to be a multi-sectorial work. And uh, this is how we're going to reach out through other ministries that have the liaisons for all these people, farmers, aquacultures, uh, workers in slaughterhouses. So it's uh, collaborative work, actually. And there will be campaigns and workshops and awareness raising. So they will want to join us anyhow, because the problem affects them as well. And I think also this will be one of the challenges for the liaison officers because we actually we ask one liaison officer on behalf of all sectors. And actually, yeah, if we have someone from a Ministry of Health of the National Health Institute, this will have to lia liaise with the ones at the Ministry of Agriculture that have other stakeholders completely different from the ones in the Ministry of Health of Environment of Agriculture. So this is, uh, yeah, 
the challenge of the One Health approach put in practice, the real One Health approach. And yeah, we have a little bit experience and uh, we are proud to say it and it's very trendy to say One Health approach, One Health approach, but to put in practice is really difficult and uh, we, we can't see every day in our normal jobs. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, yes, we have, and so we have just time for a final question and we'll take it over there. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Again, just, it's not a question, it's a general comment. It's just to respond to last And please put the mic, mic for, thank oh, you. Sorry. Thank um, you. I think actually with farmers, and I speak as a veterinarian, so perhaps maybe I'm biased. I think farmers, it will be easier than we think. Um, they have a generally very good understanding of the topic, maybe even greater than, than potentially mem other members of the public because it affects them um, directly, their profitability, and most farmers will have heard of the term AMR and will have a pretty good understanding of it er already. Thank you for, for that comment. Would anyone like to react or? No. Well, since 2006, uh, antibiotics are banned as growth promoters, so farmers are very much uh, uh, into the into the topic since 2006, so and I, 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 yeah. it's it's a it's an audience that I don't have, I, then we need to that much worried about farmers. Indeed, I, I believe you're right. I think they are probably the extremely well informed, as as you were just saying. Um, do we have any? Yes, I think so. This will actually be the the final question because we. Yeah, please go ahead. Please. Just one quick question. Julien Morin from the Ministry of Health as well and from the One Health Coordination team. I was wondering as a, as a final question and provided that uh, AMR stands as a gold standard example of how relevant the One Health approach is, if it was planned or relevant to have links with other topics like zoonosis management, vector borne diseases, or even not infectious uh, topics, One Health topics. I think you need to put the microphone close, oh. yeah, closer okay. to your, your chin. Sorry, I was wondering uh, more, uh, a, a, as a quick question, if you were planning or if you consider relevant to make a link with other One Health topics provided by AMR is very relevant and has been a lot of work on it with other topics like zoonosis, vector borne diseases, or I know, weather management, sustainable food systems at the EU or national scale. Broad question. Please, Lida. Well, we have to be very careful because there are other EU programs, funded EU programs, and we should be very careful not to overlap because all of these uh, uh, mentioned sectors uh, already are part and project of other programs. So we have to find that red thin line so as to not cross the borders over to another program. So it will be challenging, but uh, at least for waste water management, there are, there are uh, other uh, EU funded programs and we have the same collaborators. So we are able to communicate with them. And deep down, it's all up to communication with each other and finding where the steps of our future improvements. But I think it's a good point because there are a lot of joint actions going on right now, especially about surveillance. Um, I think there's, I think there's about three, right, that are, are going on. Sharp and, uh, yeah, there's, there's a bunch of them. And so I think that it is very important um, that we communicate, have active communication with the various joint actions and make sure that we really build on those synergies. Um, so I know uh, in Norway, we've already, uh, we're working actively with the joint action on wastewater surveillance um, is one of the uh, partners that at least I'm in regular contact with regarding uh, as, as the liaison to make sure that we're, we're building those synergies, we're, we're talking with the shortages for the access group, Chessman, um, but I think that there are a lot of joint actions that pertain to this and we really need to make sure that we, we uh, get those synergies from the start. Thank you and that will be our well, word of conclusion, perfect conclusion, thank you Christine. A huge thank you to our panel, I think we should give them a round of applause for all their work. Thank you very much.